This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, NASIO and YouTube. If you wish to support me, you can find the links below. What's up folks? Welcome to that lonely corner of the internet of YouTube where rationality likes to hang out. But I fear that corner is getting smaller and smaller because audiences online are flocking to channels like these. This is HyperQuest, a channel that's on a mission to bring out the science that's in our culture. Even if that means misrepresenting facts, misinterpreting verses, or just plain lying to you. I thought we should take a look at this channel today. My name's Pranav, you're watching DD Rational. Let's begin. I want to say this right here at the beginning so that people aren't confused by what my message is. I'm not saying that there's no science and math that comes from India. There are a lot like the works of Aryabhata, Varaha Mehra, Brahmagupta, Bhaskara, the Kerala School of Mathematics and Astronomy, etc. Or if you want to look at modern times, post 20th century, we have people like C.V. Raman, J.C. Boos, Ramanujan, Homi Baba, A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, etc. I've made videos on many of them. If you'd like to check them out, I've left links below and I'll be making more videos on them as an homage to their work as time goes on. Don't get me wrong, I love science when it's based on actual facts and has actual stories of real people like this. But here's the unfortunate problem. Because creators like these are glorifying stuff like this, these genuine scientists and their work and achievements don't get the credit they deserve. There is a flood of this type of content that diverts people's attention away from anything that has a connection with reality. Because glamour is what sells, glamour is what they can use in a YouTube thumbnail. Vimanas are a great example. Remember, there used to be a time when every creator was screaming for attention thumping their chests about how there were Vimanas in India thousands of years back. Vimanas ke mein aapne padha? So propellers hain, usme jet boosters hain. They would call it science just to make their words more credible. And our guy hyper delusion is no different. And you'll see that what he does is take some verse from scripture along with some creative imaginative interpretation and call it science. I'll use this video to discuss what science really is and what makes something scientific and what doesn't. Before I start, I have to say that my intention is not to shit on religion. It's no secret that I personally don't believe in it, but I'm also not gonna be so insensitive as to be outright disrespectful. I also often get comments saying that I hate anything from India. <laughs> yeah, only if that thing claims it's scientific when it's actually not. And what I do is I call such things out on this channel. I have to say something like this right at the start of every video themed on religion because I'm sure many people watching would have made up their minds that this is a video against their religion. You can spot them easily in the comment section by the only argument they usually have with them. Which is something along the lines of, Hey, what about those Muslims or Christians? They're doing this shit too. I'm tired of responding to that shit, so I'm just not gonna. My only objective is to highlight all the lying and misrepresentation of facts that this creator, HyperQuest, does in his videos to make the conclusions that he presents in them. By the way, I'm surprised this guy wasn't nominated for a creator's award in the category of cultural ambassador. Kabhi -kabhi alien yetis ke sapne aate. I mean, a promotion of culture, even if it means lying, is a qualifying criteria, right? Also, what on earth is he putting IIT in his title card in his videos for? His topics for his videos have nothing to do with what he learned in an IIT. I'm an NIT grad, yet I've never used that tag in a title card to make my video seem more credible. Maybe his boomer audience doesn't realize that he's trying to dazzle them with nothing. Jokes aside, I'll now show you what I mean by lying and misrepresenting. Let's look at one of his recent videos. लेकिन अब कुछ वैज्ञानिक ये मानने लगे हैं कि जो सिंगुलैरिटी है जिसमें विस्फोट हुआ था ये किसी पुराने यूनिवर्स से बनी थी मतलब जब ये पुराना यूनिवर्स मरा था जब उसमें संकुचन हुआ था इसको हम साइंस में द बिग क्रंच कहते हैं द बिग क्रंच वाज एन आइडिया इन फिजिक्स दैट वाज वेरी पॉपुलर इन द 70s एंड 80s बट ऑल द एविडेंस पॉइंट्स टू सच अ क्रंच नेवर हैपनिंग व्हेन आइंस्टीन प्रपोज्ड हिज थ्योरी ऑफ जनरल रिलेटिविटी एंड इट डोमिनेटेड द फिजिक्स ऑफ द मैक्रो यूनिवर्स फॉर नियरली 
whole of the 20th century, many ideas came up about how the universe began. Our weather was always there and will always be there like something static. Or will it end one day? And one of the ideas that was popular this time was a big crunch theory, where the universe expands outward but all the gravity eventually makes all the matter come back together into one point, a singularity. All the people in this camp would claim that a big bang would happen again from this singularity, leading to another universe which would eventually end again and come back together into a singularity and give rise to another universe, a cyclical universe. And this is what some people said might happen. But you know what actually happened? The theory fell out of favor. No one holds such a view anymore. Why? Because we have gathered new evidence since then, gathered new data, and everything points to the universe expanding forever. The expansion is not slowing down, instead it's accelerating. So no scientist today believes in the idea of the big crunch. You can look this up yourself if you don't believe me. Anyway, I've left some sources below. Scientists now believe in an idea called the big freeze or the heat death of the universe, where this same expansion forever leads to a state where all we have are white dwarfs, which are dead stars so far away from each other that there is no generation of heat in any part of the universe. But our friend Hyperquest here needs to pretend that scientists still believe in this idea of cyclical universe because that's what matches the scriptures from his religion. And this is the cyclic nature of universe, like in our Sanatan Dharma, we have seen that the time is cyclic, the yug is repeated every time, the universe is made, then it 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 is made. The rest of the video is him looking at verses from the Rig Veda, which talk about how the universe was created, the whole divine aspect of creation and fitting it with the discoveries of modern science. And saying, see this verse from our scripture, scientists are only discovering it now. I'll show you what I mean. इस मंत्र में ऐसा बताया गया है और उसके ही पैरेलली हम साइंस में भी देखते हैं कि वो जो रैंडमनेस है क्वांटम लेवल पर जो आज तक हम नहीं समझ पाते हैं जो केवल प्रोबेबिलिटी रहती है उसी तरह का साइंस में भी बताया जाता है प्रीटी शोर दिस वॉसेंट एन इनसेंट मिस्टेक इफ यू डू इनफ रिसर्च टू मेक अ वीडियो यू विल definitely come across all this. So you can't accidentally make this mistake. Now he goes on to translate a verse from the Vedas that apparently talks about the beginning of the universe. If you look at the Nasadi Sukta's first mantra, it starts with Na Asat Asit, No Asat Asit. No Iti Sat Asit. That means Na Asat Tha and Na Hi Sat Tha. Now what is Asat and Sat? Asat means existence, and Asat means existence, and Asat means existence, and Asat means existence, and Asat means existence. Hmm, interesting. If you look at this other really famous verse Asatoma Sadgamaya which was made really famous by the movie The Matrix That also has the words Sat and Asat but here the meanings of the words are illusion and truth or ignorance and knowledge but the meanings chosen here are existence and non-existence. We'll see why in a bit. But how can such loosely translatable words whose meanings can vary so much based on context and hence can give rise to so much uncertainty reveal anything scientific? We'll see why the words existence and non-existence were chosen. Na to samay sat tha, existence bhi nahi thi, non-existence bhi nahi thi, na to koi matter tha aur na hi space tha. Okay, so those meanings were chosen so the whole verse will match with the Big Bang. This is what's called a liberal interpretation. Let's talk about what this means. Science had to learn about the Big Bang and only then this verse could have been translated and interpreted in a way so as to match with the Big Bang. Otherwise, we should have learned about the Big Bang from this verse. I mean, science only learned about the Big Bang in the first half of the 1900s. And this verse was there well before that for thousands of years. So why didn't we learn about the Big Bang from it? I'll answer this question soon. अब साथियों अगर आप दूसरे मंत्र को देखें, तो ये प्रारंभ होता है न मृत्यु आसित, अमृतम न तरही। मृत्यु भी नहीं थी और मृत्यु से बचने की जो लालसा है, जो अमरता है, वो भी नहीं थी। अब इसके बाद बोला गया है न रात्रिया अहना आसित, यानी कि न तो रात थी और न ही दिन था। The very next verse talks about no death and immortality, no night and day, and I realize that these verses are talking about concepts in human experience. 
because probably because they were written by humans of that time who claimed that they were divinely received divinely obtained to make their words sound more credible otherwise what's the need of talking about something so obvious like there was no concept of death at the beginning of the universe which nobody would even talk about the rest of the video is him translating more verses and making it fit with the big bang i don't see any point of looking at the rest of this video because we already know the pattern of what he's trying to do in the whole video what's more useful is if we discuss why it's really stupid to call this science so let's try and answer that in science things progress as we find new evidence we look at the world around us gather new observations aka data aka evidence and that's how we learn no one knows anything magically there's no divine revelation of how the world works no one writes these things in a book for us to learn from a thousand years from now this channel and others like it constantly give the impression that this knowledge somehow divinely came down to us no we have to observe and figure these things out now you might ask me what about schools you learn things from books that too right so what's the difference between these scriptures and those school textbooks simple the difference is that i know what you're gonna say oh these were learned through evidence and then written in those textbooks um that's right that could have been the same case with scriptures what if they were learned through evidence and then written down in those scriptures how would we know that's a beautiful question okay here's the difference watch this clip when you've seen the kind of damage a swinging wrecking ball can do and you still put yourself in the path of that wrecking ball and the ball stops just short of your face how did he know where the ball would stop because physics lets him predict exactly what that point is going to be and this predictability of science is what makes it so powerful and it's not just physics all branches of science have this predictive power take biology when there's a pandemic like covid-19 caused by a virus medical researchers don't randomly start drug trials on random chemicals and drugs to try and hopefully develop a vaccine they can predict which drug molecule can target specific proteins on the viral cell and hence can be a vaccine candidate that can kill the virus or stop it from replicating and bring the world back to normalcy or take astronomy and astrophysics before we ever landed on mars we predicted the exact concentration of elements we'd find in its atmosphere using methods like spectroscopy and when we landed we were able to confirm it in every case science is able to make a prediction and we are able to test that prediction and achieve results this predictive power is what makes science science if a prediction fails that is if we find new evidence that goes against the prediction hey no problem we build a new model a new model based on the new evidence that we learned and use this new model to make more predictions like the big crunch model that we saw before that failed and we built a new model of how the universe was going to end based on available data and when we test that out the evidence matches the predictions of the model do scriptures have that same kind of predictive power that science does hell no the best they can do is wait for science to come up with new discoveries and say hey look at our scripture we came up with that first universe banta hai fir bigadta hai fir banta hai fir bigadta hai ye jo pura cyclic nature hai ye ab hum vigyan mein bhi dekhne lage hain tell me one single prediction a testable prediction that has been made from scripture not something vague where you can make a liberal interpretation and come up with your own understanding which makes that prediction true i've seen all religions do similar things for instance there's a verse in the quran that can be translated as the earth will spill out its treasures and this is interpreted by some as a prophecy that has come true they saying that it's referring to the discovery of oil which made arab nations rich Give me break look at how vague all this is the original verse never spoke anything about oil that's a liberal interpretation it never spoke about where in the world these treasures would be found because there are other parts of the world with oil so that's another liberal interpretation and these predictions don't have any logical basis where they are deduced from other learnings and understandings we have they just mentioned in the scriptures and it somehow automatically believed to be true 
Anyway, I hope I've made my point on why these can never be called scientific, no matter how much someone often forcefully makes it resemble science. Finally, I want to close this video by saying this. I don't have a problem with him or anyone celebrating their religion and their culture. What I have a problem with is him or anyone associating it with science because that cannot be done without lying and misrepresenting as I've shown you. And when someone so big with millions of subs is doing it, I cannot sit here quietly. Not while I have this channel that's dedicated to rational thinking. If you like my content, it'd be really awesome if you can support me because that becomes my main source of income. You can give me a one-time support using one of these options or give me continued support using one of these options for which you will get perks that you see on your screen. One of those perks is a private WhatsApp group that you get to join where we do stuff like this. One of our members is an astronomer and so we have amateur astronomy sessions over a Zoom call. So if you're interested in things like that, do join. I want to thank my highest tier supporters on Patreon and YouTube. If you support me in my highest tiers, you can get your name displayed on the video like this. If you like this video, you might also like this one where I took a look at our doctor who spreads misinformation. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, remember, stay rational.